to have somebody actually acknowledge the work and the effort and the choices that you make, sacrifices, was um, just really eye-opening. It's one thing to have an event and to have all these different, you know, go do a spa day, go shopping. Um, that's really cool in and of itself, but the volunteers and the people who were working in the event, it was obvious that they weren't just, you know, they weren't just there to kill time. They weren't just there to put in their effort and then, I mean, they genuinely cared and they were so kind and loving and supportive. The love was amazing um, and it felt real and it was genuine and it made a difference. The thing I remember most about that day was walking out of the sanctuary when they said, okay, go to your massages, go do your shopping, um, you're free, uh, was walking out and all of the volunteers had made a tunnel for us to walk through. I'm getting goosebumps talking about right now. Um, and clapped for us. And it was very emotional, so much so that the woman in front of me broke down in tears and could barely walk. And it was just like, these people are recognizing um, the 24 hour a day uh, parenting that we do on our own. I just remember that it was a great day. I went home feeling like I can't believe all those people put that together. The whole event was filled with love and appreciation and, and the appreciation goes right back. I was so, so thankful. So thankful I went and, and can't wait for it again this year. Beth, I have a problem. What's that, Elizabeth? I have so many clothes that there are mornings, if I'm going to be honest, I stand in front of the closets and I feel like I'm a 13 year old because I don't have anything to wear. <laughs> I get it. I have the same thing. I stand there, clothes is all over the place, and then I think nothing looks good, so I don't know what to do about it. What should we do? Well, actually, our church is holding an event next spring, April 30th, called Single Moms Morning Out. Ooh. And one of the wonderful things that we're going to do to bless single moms is have Blessings Boutique. Love that. Yep. yep. Where we need lots of clothing donations. And so let's just show the folks some of the things that women can start collecting and asking friends and friends of friends right. and family right. to donate for yep. single moms. Okay, so as you can see, this is just a sampling of my overclothing. And so we need items like fashionable. Here, Beth. Yes. This is, this is fashionable cute. wear. So very current. It can be, you know, high end or just you know, really nice uh, clothing. Yes. Um, we need accessories such as like belts or scarves, purses, mm -hmm. shoes, and you know, probably not so much t-shirts unless it's a, you know, a nice brand name or something fashionable like that maybe. Yeah. What about jewelry? Jewelry. Well, yes. I have quite the collection. There's one of my closets. Oh, there's more. Oh, wait, Necklaces. There's more. Yes. And over here, my boxes also have jewelry. So, yes. And so, suits, um, dresses, slacks, jackets. Oh, and probably we want more things like for spring yes. and summer. Yes, or all season. All season, something that could be your, worn year round as jackets. opposed to jackets, lightweight maybe, mm -hmm. um, but not heavy winter wear. Right. So some of the other things that we're looking for folks. So I'm Elizabeth, this is Beth. Beth is actually going to be heading up the Blessings Boutique team. Some of the other things that we're looking for is we have a few more slots to fill for team leads. And so we're going to have signups at the Welcome Center in upcoming weeks, starting this Sunday. And uh, we need people to serve on those planning teams. And then, of course, in the future, we're going to need lots and lots of volunteers. 
So we hope that you will um, find in your boxes, you're gonna find a save the date card that, that will be very important. We want lots and lots of people from the church. We need tons of hands. We're also going to be involving some other churches. So it's gonna be an awesome way to have fun, bless others, and in the process, we'll be blessed too. So thank you. Bye. Uh, just in case you're a woman and you were looking just at the closets and jewelry that Elizabeth had and you missed the announcement, <laughs> that's Single Moms Morning Out. If you would like to sign up or if you have any questions, first of all, this is Elizabeth right here. Bam. She is right here. You can ask her questions. And also in the Information Center, you can sign up. Go ahead and stand on up and say hello to somebody.
all the time, let's just be honest, really. I want to know why somebody wrote a song or what is that song about? Because that just really sheds light on the song itself. So I was looking up, Yes, I Will, and I stumbled across one of the band members said why they wrote it and what it's about. So here is their words. It says, Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. And then they go on to say, if we're being honest with ourselves, if we're being honest about reality, most often for us, when we're in a difficult circumstance or an unfortunate situation, we have the same attitude, and this guy has boys, as my little boys at home, especially my five-year-old. Parents, remember back to your five-year-olds. <laughs> uh, he's in that phase right now where he says, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. And sometimes our attitude is so similar to that when it comes to praise, especially when things are difficult, when things are hard hard. My heart doesn't feel like God is so good right now. My soul feels so uncertain about so many of the promises that I've read in the Bible. When I reach and I try and praise, I can't find anything because my brain is getting in the way of my heart. My brain is in the way of my heart. When that moment arrives, we have to choose whether we're in the valley or on the mountaintop where our sight is not so fixed when we can't really make out what's happening up ahead. We have to reach down past our emotion and past our brain, our intellects, and say, I choose, I choose God and I choose to praise Him.
tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Joy, God, let us know that you, you are our one true joy. 
So fill us. Fill us with that joy, Father. Fill us with your peace, God. Fill us with life that only you can provide. That can't be provided by anything in this world. Not any other person, God, but only you. You are the true life bearer. You are the one and the only. There is no other way. Father, so soften, soften our hearts, God, because this world, this world is hard in some of our hearts, God, but may we be softened so that we don't make it about us anymore, God, but we make it about you, that this world, and the reason that we're here, God, is to, to love and enjoy the things, God, that you provided, Father, but ultimately, it's so that people may know you, so that they can have that true, everlasting life. So set us on fire, God. Show us the path and give us the courage to walk that path. Even when the valley seems so low, let us see just barely in front of us, God, and then have confidence that you have everything taken care of. God, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. You can have a seat. amazing trip to Holland, Michigan. I experienced a lot of new friendships and services and experienced God in a new way in Holland. One spiritual moment that I had was when we were talking about how God works from the top down. So God's love pours into us and fills us, which then helps us give to others. And also, I made some good friends and had a lot of fun. I loved going to the pier and by Lake Michigan and taking pictures and eating Captain Sunday ice cream. It was super good, best ice cream ever. Um, and thank you for your prayers and support. Signing off.
that we did. Also had a lot of fun playing at the beach at Lake Michigan with some of the other Pella people playing Nukem and just walking on the beach and swimming in the really cool water. Uh, it was an awesome trip and we got I got really close to my group of ALC kids here. Made a lot of your mom jokes. It was pretty awesome. Signing off for now. Thank you guys so much for all of your prayers and support and care and everything as we got to go to Michigan. I don't know if you saw our lovely drummer uh, this morning. Brett um, is the youth pastor at Third Church in Pella who actually invited us uh, to go along on the trip with them. So not only you may have seen a few pictures with a bunch of other kids, um, it wasn't just our ALC team, but we got to join uh, the Pella team uh, for this trip, and it was just a great opportunity uh, for us to learn from each other and worship together and make new friends and serve alongside each other uh, for the week. So I thank you guys so much um, for all of your support and care. And um, those two team members uh, that shared their experience, they are on vacation right now, and so they weren't able to be here this morning. Uh, but the rest of our team later will join us um, and tell us a little bit about their experience. Um, but I wanted to share with you one of my highlights of the trip. 
Uh, we were driving uh, in Holland, Michigan, and I saw a Mexican grocery store. I was like, hey, guys, have you, have you guys ever been to a Mexican grocery store? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay. And we whip in the parking lot. Um, and I said, we're going to play a game. And I said, whoever can find the weirdest item, and if it's under $10, like, we'll buy it. All right? And somebody found some dried shrimp. Like, it was in the spice section, and it was like the whole, the whole shrimp, you know, all the eyeballs and then the little feet and everything, and it was only a couple bucks, and so I bought it, and we had a couple takers, and three brave team members tried the shrimp. So that was one of the hi one of, uh, highlights for me is helping these kids uh, get in a Mexican grocery store, experience new things, so that... That was a lot of fun, and I love just getting to explore those kinds of things, exploring part of creation and what God has made, but also who God has made us to be. Um, and that's something that we got to talk about a lot on the trip, was we talked about identity. Uh, there was one of the trip leaders uh, from Pella that was kind of in charge of helping usher us into the presence of Jesus. Um, and so in morning and evening, we would have like daily devotion times um, where she would just help us as leaders and the kids just engage Jesus. And a lot of that time we focused on identity and who we are. Um, so I'm going to read um, chapter one of Ephesians for you. You can take out your Bibles if you have them. It's kind of long, um, but it's important. You know, the more that we get scripture in our minds and on our hearts, there's a lot of truths in here about us um, that we can see. So if you will read Ephesians 1 with me and see, um, there's a lot to take in, but like what kind of pieces you can pick up that God might want or have for you today. All right, so the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him in love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through jesus christ according to the purpose of his will to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as the plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, in things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you heard of the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his, his great, I'm sorry, immeasurable greatness of his power towards those who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is named, 
not only in, the age, in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. All right, are you awake? All right. I know it was really long, but, and there's a lot of different things in here. But when I first read this passage, I, even though it was written to the Ephesians, it was written to this church a long, long time ago, God's word is living and active, and those truths are also for me. When I read this, I see that before God created the world, God chose me, and that he loves me, and that I am forgiven, and I have purpose, and I belong, and that I am an heir, I get an inheritance, and I'm seated in heavenly places, and I get to bring God glory, and I have hope. All these different things are true for me, but they're also true for you. You get to claim that. All of those things are promises for you. All right, before we went to Michigan, um, I had asked these students going on our trip to memorize this passage. All right, this is a big endeavor. We worked hard. I don't know how far we got, but we tried. All right, we did. All right, um, and it's just so important because we need these truths in our mind. I don't know if you caught what Will was talking about, but Will talked about something that stood out for him or something that, a switch that flipped, that he saw Jesus in a new way, was how we are filled from the top down. All right, so... If you expect to uh, love your neighbor well, God calls us to love our neighbor. We can't do that unless we're loved first, all right? Because love ultimately comes from God. And if we don't know or understand how we're loved by him, we can't pour out and love others, all right? And I love that will will learn, and he saw that, because we were giving and serving and working hard and eating a lot of ice cream, uh, but <clears throat> if we don't have a grasp of who we are in Jesus, we're not going to be able to have any ground to be able to give that and share that with other people. Um, really cool thing for me on the trip um, was we talked, uh, the, the leader um, that helped usher us into the presence of Jesus, something that she talked about, a way that she described identity, I hadn't thought of it this way before, um, comes from uh, when God introduces himself to Moses. Um, so I don't know if you know, Moses was a character in the Bible, he's in the Old Testament, and uh, his people, the Israel, God's people, the Israelites, they were um, in slavery. And God told him that he was going to lead them out of slavery, and you're going to be my people, and he was going to help them, and Moses was going to be this leader. All right, and so God's talking to Moses, um, and Moses is like, okay, you, you say you're going to do this, but like, what do I tell these people? Like, what is your name? He, he basically asked God, like, what is your name? Because during that time, there were tons of other gods that they recognized, and, oh, well, this god and that god, but, like, who, what is your name? What do you want me to call you? And God identified himself as, in English, I am. Like, God's name was I am, which is just a really weird thing to think about, because, like, I am encompasses, like, everything. Like, I am means, like, to be, to become, like, exist. Um, but yet, at the same time, it's, like, finished. Um, and it was, and it is, and it will be. It's, like, everything. It's, it's very odd to think about. But, like, God is. He's all-encompassing, all-sufficient. And that's who, this all-encompassing God, that's who he was and who he wanted people to know that he was. All right, so if you take that, if you say, God is, I am, and then you think about yourself, somebody asks you who you are, I am Karina. I am Karina. So the na very name of God I am, who, I, who he identifies himself as, I am, 
I even say, I say that before I even introduce myself. I am Karina. How as we are made in the image of God, our identity is in him because he is. I was just so struck by that. Because that means we can't talk bad about ourselves to ourselves. Like, you can't sell, call yourself, like, you can't say, I am stupid. Because you wouldn't call God stupid, right? The great I am is not stupid. So you can't call yourself, I am stupid, or I am not worthy, or I am not loved, or I am, I am, I am. And so that's what makes these truths in Ephesians and what Will was talking about, about being filled by God, what makes it so important for us to be able to continue and carry on in this life is we need uh, to be cemented in those truths and be filled up with who God is because you are loved or I am loved, I am worthy, I am chosen. All these different things. Uh, so on the trip, uh, the students, as they were being filled up with all these identity things, that they are loved and chosen and all these different things, um, they were pouring out a lot, really hard. They worked so hard. They did amazing. Um, and something that I like to do every night on the trip um, was like to try to fill them up again. And one way we did that was through these things called encouragement cards. Um, and so every night, um, all of our team members, they would pick a word, all right? So it'd be an adjective or like a quality or characteristic or something that they saw in one of their team members that they wanted to be able to encourage them and fill them up with. Um, so at the end of the night, we'd spend a little time, everybody working on their card. They'd pick a person, pick a word, um, and talk about how they saw that quality in that person, and then choose a Bible verse to go along with and encourage and empower uh, that person. Um, and so I actually have one still from the trip, and so I'm just going to demonstrate what this looked like, and I'm going to give uh, this encouragement card. This uh, card was actually for Elijah, um, and the word was courage. Um, Elijah, uh, this particular day uh, that I wrote this, I love how bold that you were um, when we were at that thrift store, and we were getting ready to leave, and I wanted to bless uh, this lady and the ministry and everything that she was doing and uh, we were in a circle praying and I didn't just want to pray but I wanted somebody from our trip from our, one of you guys to pray and you volunteered right away um, to pray over Karen um, and that was so courageous and bold of you um, also you were so courageous um, you were not afraid uh, to make your own beats uh, literally, um, with your music, um, and eat weird stuff like the dried shrimp. Um, and I just want to encourage you and let uh, Jesus continue to fill you um, with his courage and with his boldness um, and everything because he is never uh, going to let you down. Um, and so my Bible verse for you is, Be strong and take heart, all who hope in the Lord. And that's from Psalm 31. So, Elijah, come get your encouragement card. Everybody else uh, from the trip, you can come up right now. I would love for you uh, to share with us about your experience. Yes. All right. You guys just want to go down the line and introduce and just say your name. Who you are? Hello. Okay. I'm Elijah, and uh, when I went on this mission trip, I really didn't know what to expect. Expect honestly, but I'm um, very glad I went because I had one of the best times of my life. I feel I saw God working a lot of different ways. Woke up in the morning, um, ready, and we had breakfast, did our devotions, and um, then we'd all, always work and help others. I like that a lot. 
and that holds a special place in my heart to see other people happy. And we had a lot of fun too, and I like that a lot as well. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd say one of the best moments I had was the devotions because of how touched I was by it what they said and having my own time to really sink into that. So I liked it a lot. Just say your name. It's okay. My name is Jameson. I'm Alana. I'm Colin. I'm Kevin. Awesome. Uh, does everyone just want to share um, some highlights of the trip for you? My highlight was the devotions. <laughs> Mine was spending time at the beach and playing some games with the Pella kids. Tried to learn how to play spike ball. Still can't, still can't understand that game. Um, I have a couple highlights. One was going to Captain Sunday ice cream. <laughs> we went like multiple times. And going shopping was fun too. We like forced the boys to come, but they, they had fun. And then going to the pier was really fun too. Um, mine was, uh, mine was going to um, uh, Cherry Republic and trying a new pop. That was really, really good. Yeah. Mine was probably the wedding that we had. <clears throat> I just really enjoyed seeing 40 kids come together and we had an actual wedding. It was like the most awesome thing I'd ever been on a trip. They just impromptu put this whole thing together and it took about an hour. We, I walked some, I, I got to be the dad. But I walked her down the aisle and then afterwards, they were playing music and doing the, the daddy daughter dance and the, and the bride and groom dance and then everyone was doing, I'm surprised we didn't do the chicken dance. But they were doing the line dancing and everyone got involved, it was, it was a blast. And I just enjoyed seeing everybody get involved with it and just how much they, they put a lot into it, putting this all together. But just to be clear, like there wasn't like an actual... It wasn't a real wedding. Ordained marriage. Okay, all right. I just wanted to clarify that. Where did you see Jesus working in you or in others through the week? I saw Jesus working in the whole week in all of the teenagers because... As we all know, teenagers are just happy all the time. <laughs> These guys were happy almost all the time. Even when we had to get up early for breakfast and they were still getting the stuff out of their eyes, they were still having a good time and doing the hard work along with it. So there was a lot of joy involved and the only way you can get everybody to be joyful all the time is Jesus. So that, that's the only way that that can happen. So I would say when we went to the retirement home and we pulled weeds, um, and then when we had lunch with the residents, that was really great because I got to meet some of them and had some <laughs> crazy stories, I'll tell you that. Um, and then Alana and Ava like to give them nicknames. That was pretty weird, but <laughs> it was okay. Um, so yeah, I just loved seeing them happy and having conversations with them. So yeah, that was mine. The person who I saw Jesus in the most was a Pella leader named Elliot. He was able he was able to open up to Will and I, and he, and I was able to hop into conversations and listen in very easily. And he was talking about all the fun times when he was an elite snare for marching band. Um, where I saw Jesus and someone, this was like a smaller moment, but when we were walking on the street when we were shopping, I saw this one girl, she was playing the violin, and it sounded really cool, and it like reminded me that God gives us all like gifts that we can use for his glory. Um, I saw Jesus and Karina and Kevin, who when they always were willing to help people out and push us to be the best us, <laughs> yeah. Anybody have any specific, like, 
Jesus moments or like revelations on the trip? I think I've stated mine. <laughs> mine was when we were on the pier and I just looked out to the vast Lake Michigan and just looked how vast and with some lakes you can see the other end but this one it just looked like an ocean. You, it just went on for miles and miles. Um, my Jesus moment was when we were on the pier and we were like taking pictures and stuff. And then Karina told us to like stop and like look out and think, where did you see Jesus in this moment? And I like thought of the waves and me and Ava were standing like right at the edge and uh, like a wave like brushed up on our feet. And like right when we, I thought that, like me and Ava both looked at each other because <laughs> we were thinking the same thing. I thought it was really cool. Like God was just being like, I'm still here. Like I'm always with you. Um, I saw Jesus when we were out shopping. Um, um, Karina said, uh, where did you see God? And I thought about it, and I felt the wind go past me, and I saw it go past a flag, and it just made it come alive and made me think how Jesus works through us, making us come alive and do great things. Well, I forget the question, but... <laughs> Every night we would do, we would do worship, and... We would have different people came in to play with, to, to sing with us and lead us in worship. And like two or three nights into it, they started bringing the kids up there. And the kids started coming up and worshiping with their instruments, the ones that they could play and, or sing. And that was my Jesus moment because I'm pretty musically driven. And I just love seeing people go up there and hop out of their comfort zone and just sing and praise. And that was my Jesus moment. Awesome. Does anybody have any like encouragement or uh, anything um, they want to charge um, our people with that are listening? Anything you would have to say? Advice? Um, I'd probably encourage everyone here to try as hard as possible every day to try to make someone smile. Um, my advice would be I encourage like all of you to go on a mission trip. It's like really fun to like help people and people in need around the community and like seeing like the look on their faces made me so happy. Um, when you hear the little voice in the back of your head to do something but you're like nah I'll do it later but you know it's Holy Spirit just do it. Don't think. <laughs> I would definitely say if there's a, oh. even though you might look at, look at the area and see, see that there's nothing to do there, there is also still a possibility. There, there is a lot more stuff that you can do because whenever I looked up Holland, Michigan on Google Maps, it looked like a perfectly good town to me, but then when we went there, oh, I'm glad that that there was a lot of stuff that we can do there and there was a lot of fun things that we can do. Yeah, just do it is what we were talking about earlier. Jump in with your heart, not with your head. You can, your head can get in the way pretty quickly. Awesome. Let's give a hand for all my friends. All right. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Thank you again for all your prayers and your support. Um, the worship team, you guys can come on back up. We have one last song. Um, but if everyone would stand, I would like to give you a blessing. All right. Go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Soak in his power and his goodness, and his love, and everything, all the promises that he has in scripture for you. Claim them as your own, because you are loved, you are worthy, 
you are chosen, and you are sent. Amen. I think we made it in time. <laughs> We're trying to run up here. The praise team's getting old or something. <laughs> We're running as fast as we could. Oh, Elizabeth says she's not old at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, we have a new song to end the service on. Uh, if you listen to any kind of Christian music at all, you have probably heard of the, of the group We the Kingdom. And they have wrote a song called Child of Love. Love. So some of you may accidentally sing Child of God, and, and it's okay. We won't say anything about that at all. But Child of Love, because God is love. And since He is love, then we are child or children. We are children of love or of, of His love. So feel free if you don't know the words at all. Remember, you can make a joyful noise. You can clap. You can stop. By the way, we get really excited about this song because we are excited about Jesus. So here we go.